Denver 7 On Demand is brought to you by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. Good morning, I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Molly Hendrickson with an update from Denver 7. The manhunt intensifies today for an armed and dangerous woman following a credible threat to schools in the Denver Metro. Police say this woman, 18-year-old Sol Pais, flew from her hometown of Surfside, Florida to Denver earlier this week. After landing at DIA, we know she went to a gun store in Littleton and bought a shotgun before disappearing into the foothills. Police say Pais is obsessed with the Columbine school shooting and should be considered armed and dangerous. Denver 7's Nicole Brady shows us what the FBI and local authorities are doing to find her. We're awaiting an update from the FBI and the Jeffco Sheriff's Office this morning on their search for 18-year-old Sol Pais, a woman who is said to be infatuated with Columbine, despite the fact that she was not alive when the shooting happened 20 years ago, almost to the date. Sol Pais arrived in Denver on Monday evening and purchased a shotgun here in the area. We know she was last seen in the foothills area, last seen wearing a black top and camouflage pants. Authorities are concerned, of course, that she's armed and also concerned about comments she's made. They didn't specify what those comments were, uh, but they also say she did not threaten any specific school. They believe, though, she could be a threat to any schools. A bulletin that went out yesterday said there was no probable cause for arrest at this point, but that authorities should detain her and evaluate her mental health. And the FBI told us that if they find her, they will hold her as long as they legally can. They are relying on the public public's help to find her, so pay close attention to that photo. And if you see Sol Pais, you are urged to contact authorities. We're outside the FBI office in Denver this morning. Nicole Brady, Denver 7. Nicole, thank you. Most parents didn't have to decide whether to send their kids to school today. That's right. Overnight, some of the largest front-range school districts came together and decided to close due to the threat. Nearly 150 school districts from Douglas County north to the Wyoming border made the decision to cancel classes. You can see them on red on this map. You can also find a full list of those closings right now on the DenverChannel.com. This morning we spoke with Jeffco Public Schools spokesperson Diana Wilson. Columbine High School, just one of the many schools in their district, and we asked what went into the district's decision to close. A lot goes in the decision. We really um, talk among senior staff what's best for our students, what's best for our staff based on what is law enforcement saying, what is the FBI saying, what is our school security people saying, what are other districts thinking. Um, so really, a lot of debate, what's best for our students and staff, at, and it's very difficult. You know, we have 85,000 students uh, that this affects profoundly. We, of course, always believe the best place for them to be is in school and learning, um, but when it's their fear and a risk and, you know, according to the FBI, a credible threat, what kind of decisions should you make knowing that you're pulling meals from kids, you're pulling daycare from people? It, it, it's a very big decision to make. Um, so a lot of discussion last night, almost all day, but finally around midnight, um, they decided we better shut it down just for the safety of everyone. And take that very seriously. When we say shut down, there's no staff in buildings. No one is there. If it's a risk, it's a risk. The only people that will be in a building today are our senior staff at the Education Center working on this issue to figure out what we're going to do tomorrow if needed. Diana, so much information to take in here and digest from so many different sources for parents and students who are waking up this morning wondering about the search, wondering about their safety. What do you want them to know? You know, we really want them to know that they need to stay away from schools, that there is a credible threat out there. Um, as Jefferson County, the home of Columbine, this hits us particularly hard. We want to keep our people as safe as we possibly can. Um, it's important to us not to subject anyone to undue risk um, and to let them know that we'll continue to do our work on our end to try and get things back to normal for everyone and um, for everybody to listen to what law enforcement is saying. And if you see anything or hear anything, to please report it to the FBI tip line. Um, you know, just very stressful for everyone. And we hope everybody knows that the decisions that we make are seriously to try and keep our students and staff as safe as we possibly can. And Diana, we know a lot will hinge on today's search efforts and depend on if they find this woman today. But at what point will you make a decision on possibly closing schools tomorrow? And what should parents look for? Parents should look for similar messaging. It's really difficult to call school early uh, simply because our law enforcement works 24 hours a day. So we really want to give them as much time as we possibly can to resolve an issue before we cancel school. 
Um, so I, I know it's frustrating to families. They want to know right away. Uh, but for us, we want to hold out as long as we can and give them as much time as we possibly can to resolve an issue because we would rather have school as normal. So it is all hands on deck for a lot of agencies, but school districts clearly sending the message they are not taking any chances. Denver 7's Eric Lufer has reaction from parents after that threat was made public and tips from a school security expert on how districts are handling the situation. Especially since the woman who started all this still has not been found. The words armed and dangerous are not being taken lightly with this suspect and parents we have talked to understand the precautions completely. With Columbine's anniversary coming up, I know that was part, I found out that that was part of it. So um, I think sometimes taking more precaution around those sort of times makes sense. Now, students were eventually allowed to go home on time. Sheriff's deputies and school security monitored the entrances, no one in or out. Uh, this was a lockout situation because of the credible threat. That whole time, there was confusion because Sol Pais wasn't mentioned until after school was let out. We talked with CU security expert Bill Woodward about how everything was handled to this point when it comes to these precautions. I would listen to them first about their concerns, but second, I would seek out the information from school security immediately and follow what their advice is because these days they're very sophisticated about managing these kinds of threats, especially at Columbine. And parents, Woodward emphasizes you have every right to ask your kid's school about safety plans so you're more informed when real threats happen. I'm Eric Lufer, Denver 7. And we will have continuing coverage on the search for Sol Pais throughout the day right here on Denver 7. If you see her, please call 911 immediately. Do not confront her. The FBI has also set up a tip line. That number is 303-630-6227. You can also email them, denverfbitips at fbi.gov. You can also get the latest updates on the search and the long investigation ahead. No matter where you are, our team coverage will be available on the Denver 7 streaming apps for connected devices. And you you can find it on air and on the denverchannel.com. Get the most up-to-date alerts sent right to your phone by downloading the free Denver 7 app. All right, let's head to Lisa for a check of our forecast. Yeah, and things are looking pretty good. We are tracking a cold front rolling through the state today, so it's going to be the coolest day of the week. This morning, looking at quite a bit of cloud cover, and then this afternoon, a chance for, again, a few spotty showers and a couple of thunderstorms, but no real risk of severe weather today. We could see some wet roads, though, for the evening commute. Now, we're going to see highs in the upper 50s to near 60 today. Winds coming in out of the north pretty gusty, especially across northeastern Colorado. Speeds at about 30 to 40 miles per hour. Now overnight, we've got a chance for a few showers and then lingering into early tomorrow morning, we'll see some cloud cover and potentially a little drizzle. That's going to then clear up and we should see more sunshine by tomorrow afternoon. Still windy and our highs will be, it looks like, in the low to mid 60s on Thursday. A much bigger warm up and a nice bright day on Friday, you guys. We're going to go from 60 on Thursday to 70s, both Friday and Saturday, low to mid 70s. Tracking another storm, though, it could get a little soggy for the Easter egg hunts on Sunday. This next storm on Sunday looks like it's going to bring more rain and highs in the 50s. All right, thanks, Lisa. The Denver Nuggets evened up their first round series against the Spurs with a hard fought 114 to 105 victory at the Pepsi Center. Yeah, Nuggets were actually down by 19 points midway through the third quarter, but then Jamal Murray caught fire in the fourth to lead the team with 24 points. The Nuggets now head to San Antonio for a crucial Game 3 tomorrow night. Tonight, the Colorado Avalanche have a chance to take a commanding lead 3-1 to one in their first round series against the Calgary Flames. The Avalanche dominated the West top seed in Game 3 to take the series lead. Nathan McKinnon there scored a pair of goals. And then rookie defenseman Kale McCarr added his first goal in his NHL debut. And we'll be looking for a repeat performance tonight at the Pepsi Center. The puck drops at 8 o'clock. This has been your Denver 7 On Demand update. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you check back here later today for another update and download the free Denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts. Have a great day.